Hello, everybody, and welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast today. We continue action movies galore with one of our finest stops yet in RRR, released March 25th, 2022, with a story by Vijayendra Prasad, dialogue by Sai Madhavbura, Tamil dialogue by Madan Karki, and the screenplay by S.S. Rajamuli, directed by S.S. Rajamuli. I am Colton Robert. I'm Colton Robertson. I'm joined by Joseph George. Funny the name that I had a tough time pronouncing <laughs> yeah. was mine. Ah, well, I think mine's pretty easy. Um, but it's always a pleasure to be here, um, as always. And and yeah, I thank you for for getting all those names out of the way. Um, I'm I'm going to apologize just off rip if I butcher anything um, on in this episode. But um, man, what a stop we have here! Like whole oh. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't. I don't know what I expected. I had no, no previous knowledge other than maybe seeing a VFX breakdown of this in the past, but it would have just been a YouTube video while I was eating food. So like I wasn't, yeah. you know. Um, but man, I was locked in for these three hours. Let me tell you, I was like, oh man, it's a ride, and I wanted every second of it. You know, I'm like, I was, I was not complaining with the runtime and well, I, America, we need to. We need to learn, you know. We need to take some lessons from just the world. Uh, movies like this are way cooler. Uh, imagine, mm -hmm. can, my whole thought was like, imagine if John Wick was just superhuman, you know, just like this, and we could suspend all of that realism. And part of the real, you know, part of John Wick that makes it cool is the realism. But like, is the realism? But this yeah. is just we so don't have. I mean, like fun. the American, the American movies we have like this are literally superhero movies, and they're nowhere near as good most of the time. Um, yeah. you know, like that's uh no, I mean, I adore this movie. I watched it for the first time about two years ago, and I had not watched it since. So I was, it was all very fresh, but it was still extremely memorable like as i was watching every time we got to a new place like every scene starts anew i knew exactly what was going to happen and it was like uh, to have to have not watched this movie in two years but that be mm -hmm. as prescient on my mind as it was Everything was just flooded back yeah oh all, dude it's it so came fucking back. good man it is so fucking good and uh i mean a beautiful visual movie um incredibly well performed more exciting than most movies I've ever watched. Uh, you know, it's one of those movies that I sit there, except for like the obvious moments where I wouldn't be smiling, where I'm smiling the whole fucking time, basically. You know, like during all the awesome shit, you're just kind of like, oh, yeah. They do you know, some like stuff this is what I've, movies are for. I've yeah. never seen. And th it's just things you would never expect to happen in a movie you know there there could be a tiger uh thrown across the screen there could be a motorcycle thrown across the screen there can a, just a human thrown 80 yards into five other humans to to take them all down you know it it doesn't matter and and that's i loved it a they, man a man can leap 20 feet into the air running start is all it needs um is all they need you know uh oh yeah I, th the opening literally yeah, the, the, yeah. he's he's like arrest that bastard and he's like all right dude i'm on it let, let me show you what i can do and he just it's certainly not easy um yeah no it was a uh, no that like so you kick off the movie with a harrowing scene oh, to be sure i guess with, uh, even before yeah there's... yeah with with ray stevenson's introduction mm. and his is uh evil wife um evil i, I can't remember which like i mean G general's wife i don't even know yeah, if she is, technically have a title is this um, like because it seems that like she, he kind of takes orders from her so like it was kind of like she was the queen or like the i don't know she seemed to be the power almost in mm. in a lot of things but but uh i guess what's his his character name the scott yeah is oh just buxton Scott Buxton, wow, um, what yeah. a name! But Ray it felt like, Stevenson playing a comically yeah, evil man. I was uh, British guy. I, whenever I saw him pop up on screen, I'm like, "Oh, let's go, Balin!" And it kind of followed suit with like the menu having like Beast pop up. It's like, "Oh, let's go!" They're on screen, and it's like, "Oh, well, you you just suck so hard um, in this yeah. movie that it's." Um, but they do a good job playing it. But it's like I can never really like your role yeah, too much yeah um you yeah know, exactly but... no i mean like because he is he's incredible at this he's very very good at it um 
And uh, it was it was one of those like extremely harrowing ways to open the movie and a brilliant setup for the story that was about to unfold. Like the fact that the title card doesn't come until about 35 minutes into this movie. Um, it's not until after they rescue the kid on the bridge that they flash wow. RRR for the first time. Um, and that's about 35, 40 minutes into the movie. Um, but it's because that is all set up. But it's all so exciting as set up. They're like, all right, here's the inciting event. Molly is kidnapped from her village. That is what happens here. Um, the second scene, introducing fire, introducing Ramaraju, and showing him do all that. Oh. Next, water, showing ti- showing him face off with a tiger. And then how they meet in the middle, searching through the streets, you know, like, uh, and then we go from there. That is like the, that is mm. where the story gets rolling you know so i thought that that was a fascinating way to like kind of set up like a i mean a 40 minute prologue which is super cool i mean it's all extremely necessary you don't have as good a movie without it I, i'm not saying like it yeah I, it, it's just and i do have feelings that like some of it could have been shortened a little bit but like i don't really know where i would take yeah, anything off. And, and like i don't know how much fat there is to trim yeah it's, because some of it is just action sequences go on for quite a long time but it's not really repetitive like they are doing very creative things um mm-hmm. and changing it up the whole time like like uh i kind of i don't know it would it's hard just to to focus on like one thing because I, I'm like having grenade arrows go through my head and I'm having the animal kingdom Trojan horse go through my head. I'm having mm-hmm. the bridge motorcycle horse rope gymnastics, beautiful, whatever the hell that is to save the kid. It's like, yeah, it, there's so many different things that you can jump to where I don't think I've, I've ever really seen an action movie. I don't know. I don't know what to compare this to. Like, no, yeah. Is there any comparison for this movie? Like, not. This is the, and I will not hesitate to call it this the greatest action epic of all time. Like, literally, the. I mean, and uh, my American point of view, I haven't watched nearly enough uh, Indian cinema, Tagulu or Bollywood or anywhere else, um, or Telugu. My bad. Uh, in in India, I haven't watched nearly enough to be able to tell you, like, oh, it's just like this movie, you know, mm. like. But I like bet, my yeah. closest American, my my closest Hollywood Americanized mind can come to is John Wick Four, yeah. and John Wick Four doesn't even hold a fucking candle to this. It's not um, close. So, and and this has, um, you know, it's kind of. I compared it to Monkey Man, just the political nature kind of of the movie, where it's mm. it's based in you know fictional characters, but they're they're very clearly like representing a larger, mm-hmm. um, real life story that is going on. And yeah, no, and I, that was a fun realization was that they are based on real people, just a really um, dramatic, really. And, I mean. And I mean, extremely fictional. None of this happened. It's yeah. it's an entirely a what if. Um, mm-hmm. and... It's uh, it's like what if these two legendary revolutionaries met at some point and then became best boys? You know, like uh, that's I love the bromance man, here. A rewrite of history. Just every time we've had an evil thing happen, let's just go back into that time period, put in some superhuman boys and and gals, and just have them go kick ass and destroy them. Like, imagine if we can go back. 1940, we pop in just a, a crew of superhumans and they just k- kill Nazis and they take down Hitler, you know? That'd be awesome. Yeah. And, like, they actually stop, like, everything. I wish there was a movie where they, like, a, an American-made movie by a critically acclaimed director where he sent a group of people, you know, one might call them inglorious, and some of them were bastards, and they just... Ah. They just destroyed Nazi see, command. See, this is, um, I guess... This movie does exist. I guess this is um, why, in my head right now, that is why I can say, to me, this is the greatest, like, action thing I've ever seen. Because, yeah. yeah, I haven't I mean, Inglorious Bastards yet, is but... also not an action... I mean, like, there is action, but it's not an action movie. But it is, like... That's one of my favorite things Tarantino does sometimes, is, like, take, like, horrible events in history and split, like, spin them on their head to, like... Actually, mm. what if the what if the good thing happened here? Like once upon a time in Hollywood, where Cliff Booth prevents the oh you haven't I haven't yeah 
I know. Damn. I need yeah. to get there. Um, I need to get to both of these movies. They're pretty big. Um, yeah, they're good. They're fucking good. Um, so, but yeah, I know. No, it's, uh, I know. My, that's that's why I can't. I don't know. At least I can speak on this movie though. That's I, I like it. This is a good I first like, one to take in. I'll tell you that. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess uh, maybe I started off a little too hot um, with with these these kind of movies, but no. I mean, this is what the very end. This is this is the the last movie. No, we got. There's we got Fury Road yeah. left. So I guess just. One more, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. I kind of put I mean, Fury two... Road with Furios. It's like a the the end, but this this feels kind yeah. of like the last. I don't know why. Um, of, the culmination of, the of our project. But yeah. but uh, I've seen Mad Max in whenever it came out in 3D in the theater. But I feel like I if I saw this movie at the same time, I feel like I'd remember more of this than Mad Max because I'm. I don't know. I'm struggling to remember Mad Max. I don't want to. I don't want to just put it down right now. I don't think it's gonna hold up to RRR. You know, like I, uh, I just I don't think so. It sure, would. sure, bud. You think uh, it will? Fury Road fucks, dude. Really? Like, oh my god, it fucking rips. Really? Um, I think that with, and I mean, like, it, to each their own. I wouldn't necessarily tell you I like it. M- I I don't put them on vastly different planes is what I'm trying to say. Like, okay. if we're talking about, I think we are ending this action movie project with the two highlights of the project. Okay. That's good. That's what I That's think. Very good. Um, yeah. I mean, but yeah, so like, but like, I, that'll be a fun surprise for you to revisit mm-hmm. it. I think you've become a different movie watcher. I think very you true. appreciate a few more things. Like, I think you'll watch Fury Road and be kind of like, Oh yeah, no this this is awesome. My I think that you know, like old brain at the time couldn't really. I mean, I well, was and that's that's the thing 3D, is that like so we'll we'll talk about yeah we'll talk about it when it comes up next week uh, next week next Monday. But like the story here is, I mean, like I would argue this is one of the best stories in our in our action movie project too. I don't think Furiosa quite has or uh, Furiosa Fury Road quite has that on this. Uh, but the filmmaking prowess, I think you'll go like. Oh yeah, this is incredibly well made. Um, okay, but uh, yeah, I mean, like the epicness, the story that's laid out before you here. Frankly, if there's another comparison to it besides John Wick Four, it is Mad Max Fury Road. Um, Good, and then, it's not nearly as long as either of those movies, but then um, very good. I don't know. Very glad we'll we'll get them back to back. That'll be it'll be I'm nice. Trying to... not to, I'm trying not to like hype it up too much, but I think no, you'll no. be pleasantly surprised yeah. with Fury Road. Um, but the, but uh, at least right now, I mean, this was, I don't know how many, t- I mean, the amount of shots I have in here, the amount, I just stopped taking kills down at some point because the box was getting too full. Um, and then it, it was, it was insane just to keep a, a, a track of the coolest kills in the oh, movie. Oh dude, the kills were fucking gnarly, but I, I texted you this last night. Like I don't make the rules. <laughs> I, it's, I don't make the rules. Mm. If you throw a jaguar at another human, and that jaguar eats the guy, yeah, that's that's the coolest kill. That's the coolest kill for me because I mean this also speaks to a classic, you know, uh, another energy that permeates from this movie because of the spirit of rebellion, um, and because of the you know the hope and the family and the found family and the love and Star Wars. That's the I mean uh, always. Um, mm-hmm. It's not you know visually not quite. a a compatible comparison but i think storytelling wise but like when we get to that part and it is the the animals jumping out and it's it's weaponizing nature against the 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 machine that is the colonial power and you know it's ewoks versus empire it's the it's the horses storming a star destroyer at the rise of sky like that is that is the essence of that scene Mm. so like uh that's one of my favorite things about this entire movie and Hard to not go with the shot of him leaping from the Trojan horse with all the all the animals jumping oh, yeah. off with him. God, that damn, was, was in that there. Cool. Yeah, that that was one of them. Um, I Trojan horse dot dot dot. No, Trojan animal kingdom is what I came down. With. That's what I called that shot. I guess that was one of them that was in there. Um, I guess to go in order. I guess I'll go. I, I did go in order of the movie. Um, they they're in chronological. I did. 
the reflection of the crowd in his oh in Rom's eye. That's right. Whenever oh, dude, super he's about cool. to jump over the fin- I think it's before and you just see the, the whole crowd. Or maybe it's after he's done, actually. I I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's after um, that he's done and he gets back in line, he throws his hat on and he stands again and they're like backing up like, oh fuck. Yeah, I think that's when it happens. Um Okay. That's a beautiful shot. And like immediately after that, to to mirror that being the introduction for Rom and then to introduce Behem in that beautiful tracking shot over the water mm-hmm. that like that's turns. That's my next one. Yeah. That, oh, dude. That's the gorgeous. next one. I was like, okay, come on. I mean, the ref- you know, you you think the reflection is him first, and then it's not, and then or like I don't know. You you could tell it's, it's one of those things down, where I went but... like, oh, you know, like it. There's just so many of those in this movie where you're going, oh, 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 oh. like. I, I find myself saying this for when I, I love a movie so much and it's just so creative and so like this is a pinnacle of digital filmmaking. I think like I I don't know how much better you can get than this digitally. Um, mm-hmm. We've had you know, one there's comparison. an argument to be made like yeah, we, Avatar. We were talking and I think that is kind of that's what you compare it to a two hundred and fifty million dollar budget movie that like different reason for why that budget is so high you know i think like it's just a, a completely 3d and it was also world. COVID. it was also a COVID mm-hmm. production so right. it had to stay up for a long time but like yeah no r- nonetheless like it's just it, it's what movies are for that's what rrr feels like it's one of those that's like mm. this is why we make movies you know and that's fucking awesome i love when a movie makes me feel like that so i i already loved it when I watched it two years ago, I was like, Oh, this is one of, this is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. And I didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's, it's a musical. There's dance battles. There's act, you know, a prison breakout, um, a whole revolutionary story. Um, that's, that has the, like Rom's character. I think (laughs) I was, I was so back and forth on him the entire movie. I'm like, oh, dude, you're you're doing really good right now. And then like, oh, you did something yeah. that's really shitty, man. Like, I, I, sorry, I'm taking off the character slot. And then he's like, oh, you're creeping back. And then, no, nope, yeah. like, nope, can't do it. But whenever I, I like to learn the full story, whenever he was trying to, you know, we saw his origin story at at his village when his father died and and all that. Like, I was like, okay you have to kind of be my character like for the movie. Like I I think he, I don't necessarily like I stand behind him the most when I say Mm. like the character, but as far as who made the movie the most interesting and the twists and everything involved with him, I thought it was just super cool to slowly learn his story over time. And cause you do kind of hate him at first. You're like, you know, he's the cop, he's the, he like he's on you, the I mean side. like you immediately and, I mean he's a he's a wep he's a machine weaponized by the colonial power at the beginning and you you when you watch him break up a revolution like a, a rebellious mob and the like by himself yeah you're like cool kicking ass setting some of them on fire but, breaking their legs like it's a cool action sequence but like narratively yeah, you like, can't help but think like oh this is not a guy i'm gonna root for mm-hmm. you know um at least you hope not you hope that that's not where the movie's going the first time you watch it mm-hmm. um but uh and then they you know they immediately contrast it with behem who does the you know oh. uh I mean, if, the apology to nature. My favorite. My favorite line in the uh, movie is when he says, uh, "I used you for my own gain. Forgive me, brother." Mm. Which, uh, yes, he says that to the tiger as it dies in his arms, and what I'm like, "Oh, that's a beautiful ball line thing too." Yeah, you know? yeah, that was sick. Um, and then it kind of hit me later on with when they had all the animals captured. Maybe they were doing that over and over and over to get all the animals ready for the attack, you know, like, uh, but it, it kind of seemed that it was just, right. we need to eat, you know, uh, we, y- you're, you're necessary, but I didn't know if that yeah. poison ball, right, is that, was it just to incapacitate him for a little bit or did it kill? Um, was it like, was it implied that they were going to eat that, eat that boy? And, uh, I think they ate the tiger. Yeah. I think that's what that line means. You know, I like, used you for my own gain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. forgive me Damn. um I, I i don't know the whole nature like the machine versus nature weaponizing nature and like and and how 
um, even the machine, you know, the the snake bite, uh, it, it's it's unknown. Even the crown doesn't have that antidote, you know. But Behem is just, oh, get me, get me this, give me a hot coal, give me this leaf, and and he does it quick, and he's like, yeah, you're gonna be fine. Like uh, within the morning, you're you're good. And it's like it's just it's no, you know. There's it seems that like nature or people that just worship nature or do all that are are l less knowledgeable about the world, but turns out sometimes it. I don't know. There's more knowledge. Sometimes to they be got had. the goods. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just... No, I mean uh I I I adored this movie and I thought that its messaging was extremely poignant. I thought that it's a uh, political commentary and revolutionary streak, you know. I We all know we fucking hate England. There's nobody in the world that likes England, including some of the English, you know, like uh yeah. Nobody fucks with those people. So it's an it's an easy villain to be like this historic colonial power which this is based on a real period in history when mm -hmm. India was colonized by by the British. Um mm -hmm. and to again, Star Wars ass energy. You got an imperial power and rebels and you know uh it's it's an easy villain to root against the Nazis. You know like uh and they're they're not Nazis, but they might as well be, you know, like that's uh yeah, they're not going around just mass murdering, but kind of like, I mean, yes, mm -hmm. you're, you're they call them pigs or animals or they're, they are not treated mm -hmm. as humans. They 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 see no. themselves as superior and that dynamic never works um, that. Yeah, that's just a, a no go an easy, easy villain. Yeah. And, and you know, I do hate him, uh, but man. His sniper, his sniping skills. I love, you know, whenever he like gets knocked out of his car. Um, um, what's it's a white ass name? Fuck, I already forgot. Oh, Scott, it. Scott, yeah, Scott. He gets bumped out of his car. His sniper also goes up. He catches his sniper yeah. midair, and then, you know, like it, I, he actually. The part that confuses me about that is that he lands on his car. He's like, yeah, he's like car... stable. He's stable in yeah. the air whenever he takes the shot. And I'm like, ah. well, that's the thing is he's not in the air. He lands on his car. They show him standing on his car a second later. Wait. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, physics, it doesn't matter here. You know, I mean, there's the car fucking throws him. Apparently lands right under him, doesn't roll forward at all, I bet it, yeah. and he lands on it. He he just kick flipped the car, you know. He yeah, exactly. He kick flipped it. He knew what he was doing, and he he got the shot. Yeah, because I I I didn't. I guess I didn't know that he was on his car because I'm like, why was he so stable all of a sudden? Why was he so sturdy? Like I thought he was in the air and he just froze. Like he was that just still <laughs> that he could do that. Yeah, in the like air. Uh, yeah, but, okay. No, I mean he was nasty with it. He was he was he was nice with it. Yeah, it's uh, everyone was. It, uh, well, I mean, yeah, that's that's the cool thing about this movie um, <laughs> is that like uh, everyone is I incredibly guess capable. Rom and Beam are incredibly capable because, like, I love that the soldiers, like, just the regular infantrymen. They're just normal dudes, you know. Yeah, they can't, they can't actually, fucking with. They, they can't actually fuck with can't them. like yeah. do that shit because, like. Like, they'll try to get in, like, just hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then Beam or Rom will just literally throw them 30 feet. Like, it's just... Yeah. Or if one punch will send them flying. And yeah. It's... W one of my favorite parts, and not just because narratively it's very fulfilling, but because of the action that's happening, is when Rom... After, after the shot is fired by Scott, and Rom is helping Behem and Molly escape, um, and... He's he's five v oneing dudes and holding each of them with a different limb, and then he like pins them all down. But they think they're pinning him down, but he's he's pinning he's them just down. For him to uh, get away, yeah. Oh my yes. god! And like and the way I he love kept that throwing shit. his body to to pin yeah. like everyone. Yeah, like he just would literally throw like just leap, Dude. and just fall into people. And oh man, I fucking loved these uh, these actors. Ram Sharan and N.T. Rama Rao are. Oh incredible performers dude like on every front they are they did all the dubs all like all wow. all the available languages mm -hmm. they did the languages um they did uh they did their singing they obviously did their dancing mm -hmm. you know like they they are 
Holy insane shit. performers. That's... Yeah. And they're fucking jacked. Like, how do you look like that, bro? I love how that blows my mind. Rom was more like the arm guy and Beam was like the mm-hmm. leg guy. Like, I, cause, yeah. I guess whenever Rom was in prison, you know, or. Yeah, Rom. Yeah, Rom was in prison, and he he you know he's working out. He's just doing pull ups, you know. Yeah. And he's like, so that's all he got. That's like all he has right now is his arm strength. So I love that they go back to the, the like, he's on top of Beam. Like Rom is just on top, and he lock like he like locks his legs in his back, and he's like, all right, it's it's time, man. We know what yeah. to do. And all their little hand signals to just, they're that connected that even when they first meet on the bridge to save the kid. It's just, yup, bike, horse, rope, swing, flag, grab, and uh, at, all of that. We'll be good. All of that in, in just little hand motions. Oh, it was. God, that scene's so fucking awesome, too. Yeah. And I love, I mean, I love the setup for the story. Like, the the cop going undercover, trying to look for this, you know, this villainous entity. He's obviously the good guy, but, like, uh the the cops looking for his adversary he finds him but doesn't know it's him he's undercover also and then they team up they become best buds like that's so fucking cool have you seen this um, guy have you seen this guy and the second he tries to show beam the paper flies away and lands in the puddle he's like, it's like ah well oh well man you know it's like i love that like it 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 doesn't matter like things will happen the way it sh- it would happen in a movie like everything happens mm-hmm. because it's in a movie and it's it's incredible, and that's like that first scene, that saving the kid. I'm like, there's no way a scene is going to top this. I put it in there, and then we get to the dance battle at the party. Fuck yeah! And I'm mm. dude. When Rom starts playing the dr- like my one of my favorite the details t- about that scene is the the black guy also not fucking with the white people. And being like, God damn it, this motherfucker. Uh-huh. Like, he's like, what do they know of dance? Yeah. What do they know of the tango? And Rom comes and in the on the flamenco. drums, and he's like, yeah. all right, man. Well, he he's tosses like, him the drumsticks. Mm. He sees Rom approaching, and he throws him the drumsticks. He's like, show him what's up. Uh, and then he takes it over, and then he flips him up in the air. The black guy catches them again, and then he does the rest of the beat. And it's like... I loved the solidarity uh, shown in that brief moment yeah, there. It was a that minority was like slam. A, like, just the minorities yeah. were slamming um, right now. Because, yeah, I mean, what a... Just a cool, like, a dance battle of attrition, kind of, you know? It's just, how long can you go? You know, we're just going to go long? as, as it's not, hard as It's you not can. who's cooler. It's can you do the shit I'm doing for as long as I'm doing it. Um, and then Rom, to be the wingman... <laughs> To be the guy to recognize, you know, there's one lady in the crowd hoping that Beam wins. You know, everyone else is rooting for Rom because whenever they're like Rom, let's go Rom. And, I Rom's mean, Rom's the fucking ladies, sexy. Man, um, dude, holy Rom is fucking shit. hot. Holy yeah. fuck. Um, um, but uh, he, uh, she's like, no, no, Behe. Or no, he's not Behe at that point. Uh, Akhtar. Ah, he, she, she thinks right. his name's Akhtar. Uh-huh. She's like, Akhtar, Akhtar. And uh, like, and Rom, Rom sees it. And I love the slow motion. Like he's still kicking his leg. And it's, uh, I love. Uh, his knee buck. You know, he. it wasn't that he got tired. Is that his yeah. knee gave out, you know. So it's kind yeah. of like a, the best yeah. possible way for him to go out. It's like he still mm-hmm. could have won. It's, I don't know. They both. They both clearly won. You know, everyone. Yeah. They, I don't know. That was. God, that was but... so badass. I mm-hmm. love that. And, scene. Yeah. and because of. I think there's a better scene later on. But in the spirit of spreading love to how good so many parts of this movie are, I'm going to go with the dance battle scene as my favorite scene of the movie. Um, because it is it is the most memorable. This is when I looked back on this movie that I watched two years ago, the scene that I remembered vividly was this scene. And, uh, I, it got nominated for best original song at the Oscars. Mm. They got to perform this dance at the Oscars. Um, and this, and this whole thing of the, like, it was That's cool. so fucking cool. That is um, awesome. and Oh my God. And I mean like the song, like I know the dancing's fucking awesome, but like the song itself fucking rules. Yeah. Um, and, and that's actually Ram Sharan and, Inti Ramarao. In like, they're the actually doing the singing. Or, like, actually, like, always revolutionary or always, like, mm-hmm. very on topic. It's not just to make it sound catchy or whatever. It is actually, like, just really good. A, a soundtrack that I didn't expect to, like, want to listen to because I just don't understand the language. But 
slaps. Yeah, no, slaps. it's really good. That's another thing that, like, once you get accustomed to foreign movies, mm. you will just start, like, even foreign music starts to sound yeah. better. Like, like, it doesn't Molly? matter what you're hearing. Like, the is that her? Dude, like, she can sing her ass off. Oh, I don't know if that's the actress uh, that is playing Molly that's actually whoever singing. Whoever is I'm, singing, yeah. Who, whoever is singing can fucking... Whoa. Uh, um... Oh, it won! Oh, it won best achievement in music written for a motion picture original song. It won best song at the Oscars. Yeah, that, that's uh, awesome. I mean, it, what what else could have they put in here? It's a musical, action, love story, revolution story, um, nature versus the machine. I mean, we get the bad. I mean, it's a clear win. It's a happy ending. There's betrayal. There. I mean, it's just like they're yeah. like fuck it. Yeah, we're going to make a three-hour epic movie that involves everything we love about movies. And because those two scenes, that was definitely the step up. It's like, save the kid on the bridge, holy fuck. Dance battle, holy shit. But then the scene that I think you're referring to as well um, is whenever Beam is not going to kneel. You know, he's, he's, oh he's, up, he, he's up there. He's not, Fuck, he's not, man. not even gonna, the dude, oh my god, no, talk about arm strength, never mind, uh, Beam's got it too, Beam's just got the strength everywhere, cause that was, that was nuts, but, but then the, yeah, Beam's got like the, he's the thick strong, you know, like, he's like, you don't fuck with this dude, that's nature I, like, strong, I, I don't know, that's just yeah, living out I in wouldn't... the forest, you gotta be, if you, you got like you want to run away. You're from You're hunting wolf, with your bare hands. Yeah, if you yeah. want to be able to run, he was confident that he could outrun that wolf. It wasn't until the tiger yeah. showed up that he was like the tiger came along. He was like, "Oh fuck!" Uh, and then he does the thing with the ropes. Like, uh, yeah, bro's got arms. Bro's yeah. got arms. He did the whole Captain um, America thing, helicopter, but with yeah, a fucking yeah. tiger. Um, and yeah, way cooler. Um, the rope was the thing that wasn't strong enough. The that rope was broke. weak. Yeah, Not beam. Um, That's so cool. Um, but the but yeah, dude, when he won't kneel, and the and fact the that two of the best sings, scenes dude. in like, this movie are musical scenes. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the song that he sings, and that's what makes Ron be like, holy shit, he did that with words, with a song. Like, I wanted to arm everybody, and that was my goal, and like that's how I thought it had to be done. But look what Beam did with just emotion and just words. There needs and- to be that meeting in the middle. You do need the weapons, but you also need the inspiration. You need... The you you need both of them in order. You need fire and water. You need you need it all. You know uh, you need the ability to burn it all down and then put that fire out so you can rebuild. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, that's and what's the cornerstone for both of them for Beam and Rom? It's a woman that keeps them down. I don't know down to earth. It's Molly mm. and it's uh, Sita, right? Sita, Sita, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. I don't know. I feel like it, it's it is this weird kind of like a uh, after just watching Challengers. It's I don't know. It's it's funny to we I don't know. I kind of had the thought of like Beam, Rom, and Sita just being like this power couple that just yeah. that just has this revolution everywhere. Well, at the end, the whenever she like hugs and, Rom and she, she, you know, like uh, Beam's got his uh, like, his arm around her and like all that, like and, and he, they, like, they they like stroke each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like it's all it's all very and like obviously like they've been. All, the thing that this movie obviously doesn't do that Challengers does is there's not a lot of homoeroticism between Rom and they're just good uh, friends. Yes, one part NBA. though, there was one, and I'm like, okay, it's after their friendly montage. You know, they're they're having their honeymoon basically. You know, of becoming friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then besties. Yeah. By the way, it, yeah, it slows down, and I think it they're in Rom's Rom's place, um, and he's on the balcony. And he's, I think he's thinking of, of Sita. He's like holding his necklace, I think. And hmm. Beam goes out to meet him at the balcony and he puts his hand, like, Ram is, he kind of has one knee up and like kind of, I don't know. Beam puts his hand, I mean, right inches away from his crotch. I mean, it is like, <laughs> he's almost, he might be, I don't know. He might just be a, a ball dicking him. You there. couldn't see it because his knee was covering it. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. like, Maybe they are. I, I, like that's. I really thought. Like I'm just like comes up and grabs my his man's. Crotch. Well, no, I did not. Not like maybe he is grabbing his crotch. I'm like maybe no, that no, they are. Like, becoming there's a little a bit couple. more of an like, intimacy like, yeah. thing going on. I yeah. thought it was going to go down that um, route uh, for a little bit, but no. I mean, just... that's literally the only thing that could have made this movie better. Um, if I'm being honest, is if if they're le- like I appreciate just you know unapologetically romanticizing male friendship. I think that's important. You know, like there's unconditional love there. Yeah. 
there, you know, there's, there's betrayal, but they, they always come back together. And, you know, I appreciate that there's not, not romance, but like literally I'm of the mind that romance makes everything better. Um, so like, uh, it would just add a layer to it that I would appreciate a great yeah. deal, but you they know, basically regardless. already had it. I mean, I mean, they were, I fucking honestly like to, I mean, <laughs> like the way they were looking at each other. It, it they loved. I mean, they did. They really did. They love loved each other, each other yeah. man. Yeah, and no, and like that's what's awesome about that montage too is that like, like that is these are two dudes who just met and they have become best friends and like it's and they could have been the, more enemies. You know, it literally yes, yes. this is who you're looking for, and that's why it just works so well. Is is that prologue? It sets it up perfectly. It's like these people shouldn't be together, but look at how well mm-hmm. you know they well, have. Well, and the then same the twist at the mind. end, which was like. But they were meant to be together, you know, like they uh, they were both revolutionaries. They both were trying to do the right thing. And uh, Mm. yeah, that's one of those things that with Rom does become more complicated and does make him a very, very interesting character. Um, You know, I I adore. The the back and forth that we experience with him and his backstory is fucking harrowing. One of the that's one of the hardest parts to watch. That's where my line comes Um, from, like the. mm. Because I thought the the Ray Stevenson like bullet the value of a bullet was cool, but no way I'm gonna have that as my line coming from like you know because it's it's very bad there. But whenever it's turned on its head and Rom's father is giving the, the value of a bullet, um, <clears throat> he says he said that an Indian life is not worth a bullet. So how would this bullet earn its value when it comes out of your gun and pierces an Englishman's heart? When that flaming bullet soaks in blood, then and only then will this bullet earn its value. And the name of that value is freedom. And I was hard. Like, I was like, oh, hard shit. as fuck. And then he's like, yeah, yes. I'm not going to give you guns until I know you're hitting every bullet. You know, he's like every bullet you have to hit. And I don't know. He's it was I, I, I love the balance that they show, though, that it's like you can't purely like kind of go down that route. You do need the beam. You need the the emotional, the inspiration, the reason to fight, you know, and and those people had it there at that camp. I guess they didn't you know, have they, the weapons, but mm-hmm, and he refused to give them guns. And I think that, like in those last moments, he regretted that deeply, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and so it just becomes so devastating. And obviously, again, like we're dealing with another movie that just like real world wise really fucked me up. Like the colonial power shooting and killing a small child just because they could. Um, and then shooting and killing an innocent woman just because they could. Um, it, it's, it was one, like that scene made me cry like a motherfucker. And, and again, it's like, it's one of those harrowing realizations that like these fictional bet- portrayals of evil aren't always so fictional and they are relevant and they are real. And that's what's so like jarring about it. Rom loses his whole family here, you know, like he, Mm -hmm. he like one by one and he has to just deal with it. And it's like, maybe someone wouldn't lose their family in this way, in the most dramatic way to teach him the lessons he needed to learn, you know, and, and his father went out perfectly the way that he kind of would want to. And, but the, the like, at the core, it's like this kid lost his family because of just people coming in to the land they shouldn't even be on in the first place and fire, you yeah. know, firing guns. And it's like so that that's where the core is. And I think all the dramatic, like all the the drama, all the action, all everything, it's just to to kind. It's like the song or like the inspiration to keep you in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. It's like that. That's kind of the fire or like the weapon of the movie. But then the the uh, beam side or like the, the inspiration is like just the story, how good this story is. And that like, yeah. it's, it's good on both fronts and like, it's such a good story and it's such good action. And maybe that's like the formula for a movie. I don't know if that's what, if they were trying to go for that, I don't know, but um, no, I mean like it's, it's certainly a part of it, you know, like it's not like it's, it's not nothing but that, but it, it that is like at its very core, the action is fucking stellar. Like, and the story is fucking stellar, you know? Like, uh, you can get away with one or the other. You can. And mm-hmm. the movie can be fine. It can be solid, 
you know? But what they managed to do was make a great fucking movie because they didn't skimp on either side of the, on either side of the movie. And that, that benefits from a three hour runtime. Like, I don't think it's impossible to make a movie with great action and a shorter runtime with a good story. Yeah. I don't think that's not, I don't think that's impossible. You know, monkey man, great example, fantastic action, fantastic story, hour and 40 minutes, you know? So like, it's not impossible, but for the epic that they were telling here, like this spans time and we watch them go through. Yeah. How long was it? I mean, it was, Um, they had a time jump of like 10, I think it was more than 10 years or something like I, I thought I heard that, and I'm like, no, no, no. I, I thought it because I know there's a four year jump at least because the um, Rom's village or where he came from said that he's mm-hmm. been gone for four years and he he hasn't come back. Like, is he gonna remember about us? But then from that point on, how long from in the present timeline is mm-hmm. it? Like, is um... Sita in? You know, does she leave and is there? You know, when? How much? So there's four years. From then, and then does Sita just go straight from that to trying to find Ron? Probably. Or? Well, no, because she got summoned by That's the right. English. Oh, um, because she and he that was, going was to die. months. That was months removed because there's never a specific number. But Scott goes, "It's been months." Mm. He says something about how it's been months. We need to find, like, we need to find Behem. You know, essentially, you know, like, uh, well, and he says it like beam you know like uh he's like uh whatever the fuck that means you uh, know like uh he plays that so, role well you know it, it it's it's such a weird compliment to like give it's like no but like, like that's real shit someone's like, gotta play that you know like no I guess what, you like if you're gonna make a movie role. like this like the in the movie black klansman um you know with adam driver john david washington mm. uh topher grace the uh you know that 70s show eric mm-hmm. okay he plays he plays david duke the the grand wizard of the KKK. Oh, um, okay. he plays David Duke, and he said he had to like, he had to like not do anything for like weeks because of how he needed to like detox because it was disgusting and vile to play a character like to that. have to deliver you know? a line like you actually mean it. You know, yeah, like in. Like to call another person like a swine or like a dog or like you know that's just or or an actual slur like yeah yeah that's that's in, that's intense shit you know and uh, it's it, like I remember uh, there's that story from behind the scenes of Django Unchained where Leonardo DiCaprio was intensely uncomfortable with the amount of times he had to say the n word and Samuel L. Jackson was like uh, Samuel L. Jackson had to give him a pep talk that was like, hey, don't worry, player. This is just another Tuesday for us. And, like, Leo was like, that doesn't really help like, me. You know, like, that only makes it worse, kind of, yeah, you know? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> like that, doesn't, that doesn't actually help me all that much. But I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> you know, you've given me the motivation. You know, like, that that sort of thing. And, like, uh, and, and Ray Stevenson, like, he obviously, I don't think he has to do quite that. It's still a terribly evil, like, if anything, it's his fucking wife that's, uh, I might Why need to fucking no detox blood? after. What is the, Jesus like, Christ? Yeah, I like, thought I, I thought it would be pooling at his feet. I want to see him rip apart. You know, I'm like, oh. use this a barbed wire whip, like bro. And the first time that Rom raps a minute, and it's while he's singing, and he doesn't even fucking budge. It's yeah, just he's... like tearing through him. I was like. It's one of those just like, fuck, yes, you know, like, oh, my God, this movie gets me fucking going, dude. It is it is so good. Um, Every scene. Like, I, I don't – it's hard to just stay at one place because it's all important. Like, it all leads I, to to the next thing. I don't know. Oh, and, yeah. It all I love the melodrama, you know. And I love – like, you, you mentioned earlier that, like, stuff – happens because it's a movie you know and and like it's it's not worried about being like well that wouldn't actually happen you know like when sita runs into them and saves them and is like uh runs into them and is like uh oh well you know like uh, everybody here has smallpox you need to go you know da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. like uh and then she explains you know i came from my husband you know he's he betrayed his best friend and now like all that stuff like there's and not a part of me there, like <laughs> You know, like like yeah, uh, the the dawning of realization for him is fucking incredible, and that's one of those things that's melodramatic. It's a bit corny, but it's fucking awesome. It's I what absolutely you see. love it. It's exactly what you want to see. It's like and realism is great. You know, I like I I don't want to knock it. Like John Wick has its vein. It is very realistic, but 
dramatized. You yes, know, yeah, but, like it, there's certainly a fantastical yes, element to it, but and, it is still very real. Yeah, but action. When, and whenever you are throwing a jaguar already or a motorcycle, things like that, just th- story things that are like, oh, that's so cliche or corny. It's not really anymore. It fucking rocks. Like it's like yeah. it's like, like when oh, you no. just steer into that. Like it's one of those things that like we talk about with the MCU. They can't. They don't believe themselves. Mm. You know, like they 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 do these corny things and they're like, "Did you just say that? Did you just do that? You know, like did that just happen?" Uh, and it's like, uh, own it. The things that, exactly, and the things that are said like that in this movie are by observers, not the main characters. It's it's by people who watch those oh, yeah. things happen Beam and, and go. They are confident in their abilities, man. They are like whenever he does the whole first initial. You know, tearing up of the rebellious crowd, and he's like, that, "That man doesn't scare me one bit, but he does." You know, like, uh, that's that's a good line and a good reaction, and it's like, it, and it's not something ah. that, like, you know, it, it's it's it steers into the fantastical element mm-hmm. by being like, "Did you just fucking see that? That was insane." You know, it's it's not like a, I can't. No, yeah. there's no way that was real. You know, like, uh, that didn't just happen. Um, it, it, it's, yeah, like, Rom gets back after doing that. He stands in line and he just, you know, or something like that. Instead of just being, like, getting back in fucking line. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, that. and those are extreme examples. It's not something that, like, every superhero movie is guilty yeah. of or anything. But, like, uh, there's, there's plenty of stuff like that. They have their literal like superhero introduction like moments all like every time they start in an action sequence it's almost like holy like they're in like here you go like uh, here's their introduction and like the uh the storming like the the storming of the castle or i don't know what to what do you call that it's their house i don't know they call it like i guess it's it's just where they live oh which is crazy can i come to your house yeah your house is massive and she's like oh no it's you know it's really whatever and it's like but can I, can I come to your house? Like, God. <laughs> I know that he's like looking for Molly, but it's extremely funny whenever he's like, "Can I come to your house?" Um, <laughs> can, can, so can I come to your house? Um, oh, is that? I think it's there. I, I put snake fountain in firework pose. Yes, it's beam in front of yes, the fountain yes, with all there. the things flying behind him, and like mm-hmm. the water is spiraling, and like it slow mo's, and then it goes to Rom with all the fireworks that are spiraling, and it's like. The man made the nature. I don't know. That was it. Was always so cool. That I loved the fire out. and water. Oh my god! Imagery. So cool. Like and even during that fight, before they get to that point, every shot with Rom is fire burning in the background. Every shot with Beam, Behem is water spraying and fountains yeah. pouring all around. And or it's animals like animals, like, because Rom comes yes. in with that flaming carriage. Like that's he mm-hmm. literally is riding. You know, and he he just he knows it's with gonna, four with four horses. By the way, oh, that's actually sick. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, sick. Like and, that's... I, and I love how Rom uses the horse, but Beam uses the motorcycle. You know, yeah, it's like they yeah. they they meld. You know, and it's it's well, and he's talented at fixing the machines, but he prefers not to use them. You know, like it's oh it's it's an God, interesting he's a repair. Oh, yeah, oh, it's wait. an interesting because he lived in that. He lived in the village. So he's just kind of got it like that. Like he was, that's his alias. Uh, and, and he's like, I'm good at fixing who knows, shit. Who knows, who knows how, how long Molly's been there. Uh, you know? It could have been, he's been, he could have been staying there for months mm-hmm. come that point. Like, and he's that's learned true. that skill and he's, you know, because I love the, like the people protecting him there. That's a really, really cool angle with it too. And I love the, the initial discovery that Rom's a cop whenever he like goes to that meeting is like, what if we just killed yeah. governor Scott Stop beating around then, the bush guys, you know, let's get to what really yeah. matters. And, are you serious? I'd be like, are you He's wearing like, a wire, you fucking narc? You know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. if somebody shows up to your rebellion cell and suggests the most outrageous thing possible, don't immediately trust the fucking guy. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I loved the moment when it is, like, a realization. Whenever he, like, he's, like, goes up to the guy and he's like, I'm an officer on duty, you know. It's fun. And he salutes him. And the, like, slow motion <laughs> shot of the guy looking at him. And, like, in the corner of the screen, you can see Rom go like this. Yeah, he's like, and he like God puts his head down. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like, oh, dude, fucking awesome. And that leads to that chase through the streets, which leads to the craziest zoom I've ever seen in my fucking life. Mm. Um, yeah, that shot dude. of them of him running through the crowd, 
it coming off the coast, it going all the way to the bridge where the next scene takes place. Yeah. That's that's and, a transitionary shot is essentially what it is. They're like, now we're going to be at the bridge. That's where Behemoth is. And it's like... There's no way that that's one camera pull. That has to be a melding of two shots. Like, I, I, I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, how the fuck do you do this? Like, and I think... Could be a drone. I think it's a drone that starts from far away. It then, like, it started at the 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 end of the shot. It flies in, and that's they reverse that shot and then put it mm-hmm. after just the actual camera on the ground moving backwards, and then it meets there. That's that's the the only way I'd see that it could be. Well, like the camera's possible, never actually on the ground either. It's always it's kind hovering of, above. Yeah, it might. So I'm like, is it, it could one? Just be a you drone. think it is continuous the whole it time? It could be. I don't think so. I actually think some of it's VFX. Some of it doesn't look real. Mm, um, yeah, and they do a really good job. Like, I mean, the you, VFX are certainly stylized. They're not hyper real. Yeah, but that's one of those things that this movie benefits from greatly. It reminded me, I think it's of John Wick three where. You remember the scene on the motorcycles in that tunnel where he's like fighting the dudes and you can tell like they're not on fucking motorcycles, yeah. you know, like, but mm. it works perfectly for the context of the movie like that. Like when you come up with stylized action and stylized VFX and you have a visual language for the movie, you can work around it not looking real. And it, it and was the whole I mean, house still, VFX? Like, was that a lot of it? Was I don't like a lot of it, like was. the big shots, like, no way they built that shit, you know? But it's no. like, and it, it kind of did have a little bit of style to it to where you're like, it has that it's it's glossy. That's how I want to put it. Like, it's like a there's a sheen to it that where you're like, well, that that's not real, but that doesn't matter. Like, I think it's that's like the point too. Like, it's like yeah. the machine versus like it is showing that like. The styles are so different. The red mm-hmm. brick, you know, it's like it's it, – there's no other architecture around that even comes close to matching it. And it's mm. it's just their world. Like they are putting their world into another country like where it just – it doesn't work. Like the car. Doesn't fit. Like those cars don't really work there, but they're they're driving them around and, you know, they have to get – like motorcycles work in India just Bro. way more. Like everything just doesn't make sense for them. But one of my le- one of my least favorite characters in the movie was Robert, um, the guy who like can't start his motorcycle at the beginning and Behem just flips oh, the switch. Dude, um, yeah, because because there's he's that girl, part. Yeah, laughed. Yeah, laughed yeah. at him, and that's why he had to beat him up. He's not- like, I'm gonna take it out on this little guy. You know, like a uh, my one of my favorite parts of the movie is, and it's amidst one of my favorite scenes when they storm the fortress and you know the the animals all jump out and stuff. And he faces off with Robert, but it like him. Robert, Robert goes into that interaction so cocky. He does. Like, he puts the key I, in his like his little I went, wrist thing, and he was like, "I was why I out loud went, Robert, please fight my boy Behem, okay? Please fight him. I want to see this so bad. He was letting you do the shit you did he earlier. Grabbed those chains and just fucking wailed on him too. That was nice. That's a bro when he when he throws him up." And his arm, the way he incapacitates his arm he wants the key on, is by slamming him on the antler of a fucking deer. Like, bro. Bro. Like, mm-hmm. I fucking love this movie, mm-hmm. man. It's just, like, how do you even think of something like that? That's outstanding. I think I that's I, I would love to be in, like, the writing room. Because that would, imagine just being, like... Yo, imagine if we threw a jaguar and then like, or because the jaguar was going to eat Beam first, you know, and he, because yeah. they, you know it's a wild animal. You can't, but he, he hits knows him with this. the reverse. He knows this, and he's like, okay, well, I'll give you another meal. You know, uh, here you go. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you Bro, what you want. And one of the coolest fucking shots in the movie is Rom jumping to meet the tiger in the air. And knocking his ass out. Like, bro, that's so fucking cool. Rom, you know, like. Rom just had, I don't know, he was the guy. Because, like, he does, whenever he became Tarzan Rambo, that's kind of the, the, the closest thing I could I could Tarzan call him. Tar- Rarzan, no, Rarzan doesn't really work yet. Tarzambo. Tarzambo. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, that's where my favorite shot comes in. Holy, when, yeah, whenever. 
I think that was maybe that was the last one that I had. Yeah, his bow and arrow spotlight. Whenever the, the spotlight's dude, behind him, the, and it's, dude, I put it I put it in the sheet as um sexy <laughs> sexy ass <laughs> rom backlit with a flaming arrow. So like yeah. you've got all the greenery right in front of him. He's got the flaming arrow in his hand. You see his silhouette, and like you just see his silhouette, and you know he's fucking fine. Like that's what's insane about it. Is like you look at his like the shape of him, and you're like that man is hot. It doesn't matter what his face looks like. That is an impressive looking person. Um, and then it just helps that his face is hot. Um, mm-hmm. there's the there's that part like. I adore that they let Rom go on this tear here where, you know, backlight, he's firing the arrows, he gets the grenades, he fires those arrows, and all the while, Behem's underwater for like seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then his introduction, his re-entry when he gets his hand on the spear, that slow motion shot where it's, it's almost, it's the perfect mirror of Rom being engulfed by flame in the background the water is like dripping off of him and it almost looks like he's like using it to levitate almost oh my and like god. dude oh my it's god it's so fucking it's, cool it's perfect it's this this yin yang of water and fire at all times and it's just nature of the machine it's it, like dude. man yeah i don't again like all this stuff we talk about this with our favorite movies of all time our favorite franchise of all time star wars you know like that's and that's how good this movie is it's, on top of an already it, brilliant story. Star Wars is more realistic than this, you know. At times, like, yes. Yes, yes times. obviously the Force and, and things go crazy, go nuts. But, like, it's kind of based in more realism, like, a little bit, uh, which is is crazy to say um, that, that a real-life story with humans in Britain and India um, isn't like Star Wars. But Star Wars, you know, they're proxies for Vietnam and... And and just empirical or imperial powers. So um, yeah, I mean, like, and the, if it's a proxy for a real imperial conflict, the U.S. versus Vietnam, like Britain versus India, like that's a, it's same shit, different day, you know. Um, like it's yeah, it's, it's so such a sad good, story that is told over and over. But this is the we'll, this is we'll the best always... story that can be told over and over from mm-hmm. the shit and from all the. The negative. This is always like fuck. it's hopeful. Like you know, I appreciate that it doesn't end pessimistically. Like we are. It's uh, again similar to Monkey Man. These movies typically end with a twinge of fuck, but it's not. It's like fuck yes, here yeah. we go. Sicario. We're doing the thing. That's what we're fresh off of, and <laughs> this doesn't hold. Sicario is just. I, I love you know, Denis Villanueva. Great. You know, I love your movies. Not for me. Not for me. Sicario, just not not quite there. This, yeah, this is is on a different level, on a different tier, uh, completely. And let's see. I think I think I did get through all the shots, at least all the shots that I put down in the paper, like in the sheet. Mm. But I did not put all of no, them. Like, like there, there are, are many gorgeous, many, like many even shots. after it's after the um, after Behem refuses to kneel. Um, and it's Rom kind of hanging out at that place. The imagery of him in the barbed wire, like you can, oh, wait, you, yes. you see him through it, through the dude, fucking awesome. And then you see him walk away, and they've got this focus pull on the barbed wire, like it's mm-hmm. like the river of so blood cool. that was created, like beams blood, the, and then he puts his hand whenever in. he's holding. Whenever he's holding Behem at the top of the building and like they're about to transition into the fire and ice arm holding yeah. thing, but the blood flows from the corner into his eye and then it falls like a tear of blood. Like, dude, a, like just visually fucking brilliant. Like, digital filmmaking does not, it hardly gets better than this. Um, and so I. I'm as high on this movie as most as most anybody can be. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I'm. I don't know why this kill did it for me. The only kill that I had down in there was the during the prison break sequence. Whenever they're both climbing the tower together, Ram is still on top of Beam. Oh yeah, and they're, and they're both climbing, and then they get yeah. to the top, and then they look at each other like, "All right, we're about to do this." They swing up, do like a whole flip. 
and just oh, drop kick the kick dude that guy. straight off. Fuck. And I yes. was just like, I'm like, okay, that was just cool. Create like they're both doing it together because God, I don't this know. Movie is so cool. I don't know how to pick. And uh, I mean, there's infinitely other mini kills to to choose from. Like, I mean, even just like the neck snaps or like like a he put his knee like in someone's back and just folded the dude kind of in they, half one time. Yes, um, dude, they have. Like, the fact that this movie is as brilliant as it is action-wise and innovative and creative, that it's really fucking awesome hand-to-hand sequences are the low point, is kind of crazy. Like, the whole the whole escape sequence for Behem and Molly is hand-to-hand action. Uh, you know, like, yeah. it is... That, it, that is true. all it is. Um, because the guns, is... oh, he took all the firing pins out. Yes. Goated. Yes. Good move. That was that was awesome. Whenever they're like, "Oh, what the fuck? Well, my gun's not working." You know, and they're like, "Now I have to and use a, a great, knife." Or and a great like way to represent them as like a you know hive mind. They don't think for themselves. They all do the exact same thing like three times, and like uh, it was just a. Oh. I I love I I love this movie, man. I, I'm so glad that we ended up choosing to cover it because it is precious, precious to me. Um, man. will be a permanent, permanent favorite of all time. Oh, I me. need like, this uh, in 4K. This one is uh, I need in the best quality I can I can get it in. This is making that tier for sure. Physical copy. I need it. I need the best. Um, that good it can luck. Be. Yeah, I guess true. I can't actually. Oh shit. Um, hmm. most of it will be, uh, region limited. Um, I, i I bought a Blu-ray last night. Um, I got it off eBay, so I'm hoping for the best. Um, I but you can't find that. it anywhere. Yeah. yeah. eBay is the way to go if you're going to look for this movie. Um, mm-hmm. but it def- it's in that tier at least. That's like, yes, I, I want this. I finished like, the movie. And I searched for where I could, where I could buy it. Like, I, it took me to eBay. I don't shop on eBay. That is not something I mm-hmm. do. So, like, that's that's the lengths I went. It is to, kind of a last make, resort. I, it is. Yeah. I created an eBay account last night so that I could buy this movie. Like, that's the type of shit we're on here. Um, but yeah, no, like, I I adored it, dude. I and I remember appreciating it a couple years ago. I wonder what caused the, me to not the time as well, just in the real world, just the revolutionary spirit in general. I think it is. It, is. it, it, it hits I've a been, little differently. I've been maybe, pretty deep on but, the. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty deep on the diving always, into the study stuff for a while here. Yeah, you've always been uh, so there. I haven't. I know me. Like it would make mm-hmm. sense for me to be very no, different. No, but that's that's why ago, I'm like that's. I think I think one of the interesting things is that this one. It's it's mixed. It's not mixed reception. It's on the whole very very well received. But I think I have seen takes in the past that I was kind of like, oh yeah, I could see that. Like the things I do love about the visuals of this movie, the digital sheen and the the prowess of that style of filmmaking that they utilize in this movie is something that others don't like. They're like, I don't mm. like the way that, like, th- you remember when we talked about Wes Anderson and we're like, I can't really wrap my mind around you not digging this style. Some people like don't. there are, this yeah. is, this is what this just doesn't work for some people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I'm, I'm not sure what it must've just been. It was two years ago. I, while I have always been of this mindset, I'm 100% a better movie watcher than I was a couple years ago. So that probably helps. Mm. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean like I, it, it it was one of those ones that I was disappointed I hadn't watched since the first time I watched it. I was like, oh, my like, God. Like, why? Yeah, kind of like, what's up? I, and, like, you know, uh, it is three yeah. hours. It's a that, big yeah, commitment. That's, that's, that's probably why, yeah. you know. But, like, uh, I don't know. You got to love I'll... a movie to lock in for three hours, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, like the Batman's three hours, but I love it as much, so I don't see it as three hours. This is mm-hmm. the same. Like, it's I, a pride joint. I mean, it breezes by you, too. Yeah. Like, every time... Every time I like paused, it was like forty minutes further into the movie, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Mm-hmm. Um, I really wish I could have uh, could have seen it in, with the original audio, and yeah, yeah, I got used to it. It wasn't a problem at the end because a lot of them were the same actors and everything, which which is really good. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, it'd be really nice to get like an OG copy. Yeah, somehow. and that's what's that's really annoying too because you, Netflix, like SS Rajamuli, the director, like is pissed at Netflix because it, it got a 
it got worldwide acclaim because it was on Netflix, you know, like it wasn't, it wasn't released internationally, but mm-hmm. Netflix, Netflix just didn't purchase the rights to the, to the Telugu version. They bought the Hindi version. Um, and they bought all the, all the, the random dubs that we have here. That's what, um, why? Like, well, and I, I'm, I haven't looked into it, so I, I hate to speculate like this, but there is the whole, like, we talked about this with Monkey Man, how Netflix was ra- afraid to put it out because it kind of went against Hindu nationalism. So perhaps that's why they only buy the Hindi version of a movie. I don't know. Mm, um, yeah, that's sad. Sad that even this, that that's even a factor, you know, where where, where we can't just watch the original movie. You know, like, it, it mm-hmm. sucks that that legality and stuff has to be in the way i mean someone deserves to own the rights to this movie i'm you know i don't want to whatever but like i don't know it would be very nice if i could just get an original copy of the movie i'm like i could have on z on z5 global yeah but i was like there's no free trial available in america you have to pay uh either 11 bucks or a 11 bucks a month or 50 dollars a year and i was like i can watch it for free just in a dub somewhere else so i just ended up doing that but um i'm I'm hoping the blu-ray i bought i didn't really look it it might it it might might be the original audio but uh i was just like i want the movie so i'm gonna get the fucking movie however i can um but yeah no i i'm extremely satisfied and there's there's a lot of movie here so i'm sure we're missing stuff but um, at least the big beats, you know. Like, yeah, oop. I will focus on my performance and character real quick. I don't think I've officially said that. Um, I went with N.T. Rama Rao as Behem for both. Um, I thought like his scenes with Molly particularly were poignantly performed. I thought he was brilliant in those. Um, yeah. The scene where he's realizing who Ram is and Sita's telling him all that and like the dawning Broken of realization. Bulge and stuff. his like, eyes. Yeah, I yes, love his, yeah. his dawn of realization face. Um, yeah, I mean... Performance wise, I loved Ram as a character, and he does a great job at the action and everything. But Beam has has the more emotional and and mm-hmm. uh, those those I don't know. Just overall, I I I, uh, I had to give give him the performance too. But uh, I like I was I mean it's not like anyone did bad. Like I don't know. Like there even I'm trying to. There was one more that I thought. I'm blanking on him. I felt like there was one more person that was just kind of like, ooh, I kind of just liked them. Um, oh, maybe it was his father. I don't know. I thought his father just, where did I know him from? I felt that that's the one guy from, I don't know why. He he felt familiar. Um, Rom's father. I'd be interested, I'd be interested and I have if you'd no seen him idea in why. anything. I know, because um, why yeah, I'm pretty sure this dude so is so familiar. Like, he is, he is an Indian actor. I don't think he's in any American movies. It but, doesn't uh, look like it at all. Yeah, I mean, like, um, this filmography is, and yeah, nothing's ringing a bell. But I, I, I don't know. It, that, for some reason, he was he was ringing a bell. Um, but maybe that's that's the emotional scenes with Rom though. Is whenever he is a kid. Really, and it's yeah. and then and then you see him like reflecting on it, but he's only like holding like a necklace, or he doesn't really get the in prison. He does, you know. I now I'm I'm kind of backpedaling a little bit. You know, when he's in prison, he has to go through a lot of different looks. No, and, I mean like when he stuff. when Behem confesses to him and he's playing sick, um, like he can't move, and then uh, mm. after Behem leaves and he's trying to regain his strength, and he's like punching the walls and stuff, concrete walls, by the way, um. Oh my god! Just yeah. putting holes in concrete with his fists. Um, right after he like, got bitten uh, by that snake, too. Right, he was yes, in, even yeah. in a weakened state, and dude yeah. was still bro. Bro was, lit- but like the the face he was putting on and the the reactions he was having is like he he was incredible in this. Ram Charan was no like mm-hmm. I just think that's how good Inti Ramarao yeah, was. That's um, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, he. Yeah, I mean, the heart of the movie, you know, the heart of the revolution, yes, the yes. not, you know, the the fire, the water. He's, I don't know. It was, wow. This, I mean, usually, I don't know. I, I don't know where this stands, like on on my top list, but it's it's pretty, like it's up there. It's in there. Like, like it's, it's it is. Up it's there. one of those. Like it's for for example, like when I reflect on why I 
why didn't I put this in my top 100 when we did that a year ago? Like, it blows my mind I, di- I didn't feel that way about this movie. Like, for sure, because I, I am there. You know, I'm there right now. Um, and I'd be interested whenever we do eventually get back around to, you know, doing a list like that. And I think we've discussed how if we do it again, it'll be like 250 or something like that to make it fresh and just bigger and longer and you know like we it's too many so movies could be, there's too many could movies, be years man. down dude um, like i'm at a point now where i could not do another top 100 i literally couldn't do another 100 i could do be, 250 and even 250 like my favorite movies ever list on letterboxd like whenever i watch a movie and i'm like you know what that's one of my favorite movies ever i'll, I'll throw it on this list um let's see how long it is it's not quite 300 297 <laughs> It's 297 it's 300. movies. That's 300 movies. Yeah, that's no, yeah, 300 there. movies. So I'm like, even that, I'm going to have to cut 50. And I'll be like, fuck. You know? like, uh, And who knows? By the time we get there, maybe that list is like 400 fucking movies. So it's just like, like so. But that's the thing. I'm saying RRR, no matter what, is in that list, though. It's not one of those ones that's, that might get cut. And that's like that's why my mind's blown that like a year ago, I didn't feel mm-hmm. that way whenever I made the top 100 list. Um but uh hey we're there nah, now man, though I, better late than never yeah. you know better and, late than uh, never yes and, and we're here i appreciate it as all hell and yeah i'll be coming back i i it's the only thing that that is tough is the runtime like you know you just have to have a night kind of cleared where you have three hours but and i mean you do have to lock in it's a foreign language film so it's not like you can throw it on in the background or just kind of listen yeah and this isn't points. really a movie i'd want to just have on the background like i i would want to watch it again that's true and, and be but in yeah it, like so. even movies but, that i do want to watch like every once in a while i'll check my phone like every time like every time i did that last night i went that's 10 seconds back you had like, to I gotta, pause no i yeah, yeah. I, if i had to get on my phone it was I'm pausing the movie. I'm not missing. Yeah. A I'm not letting of shit this. slide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but man, yeah, I'd, this one was was not expected at all. But I mean, definitely my favorite stop that we've gotten so mm. far, e- with all the John Wicks included, which is crazy. Like I, like I, John Wick four and this is, is probably my two like top choices that we've covered, just action wise. And I think this yeah, just beats no, it. That. I think I don't know. Like it's just it's kind of there. Um, like hard boiled was really strong, mm-hmm. but like it wasn't this, you know. Um, and I would I would probably say that's my other favorite one, you know. Yeah, um, that was that was hard boiled was nice. Uh, that yeah. another one that was action. I mean, the action was just incredible, you know. Like mm-hmm. and but the, ah, this this is movie magic action you know yeah, it's this heightened is, this is, yeah, uh, it's, it's just a it's different, different level it's it, different yeah so no i mean i love this movie i'm excited to rate it do you think we're there i think we are at least all the favorites are covered now um all right so all right. unless we're missing yeah, a glaring feel, part of the movie i don't think necessarily i don't think so either but um, i think we've done i think we've done the movie justice for the most part you know um it's a three-hour movie, like we said. It's big, so you know naturally stuff will slip through the cracks, as will with any movie. But uh, yeah, um, before we rate this bad boy, I'm going to go ahead and do the plugs. After the plugs, we're going to rate this movie on a scale of one to ten, uh, both enjoyment and critically, and take the average, and that's how we get our movie. We get our movie ratings, um, and then we are also going to do album of the week. It's Friday, baby, so we got music for you. Lots, lots to, lots to look forward to after these plugs. So stick around. If you would head to patreoncom slash pennybloompod where you'll find over 100 hours of exclusive content, all sorts of book reviews, comic book reviews, movie reviews, and early access content for a dollar fifty a month. You can support this podcast financially, which is huge because it costs me money and I don't make any off of it unless it's over there. Head to Twitter, follow at pennybloompod, follow on Instagram and TikTok at pennybloompodcast. Remember to leave a five star rate and review wherever you might be listening, and continue to down load that'll be a huge help um beyond that you can watch us on youtube uh head to youtube and look up penny bloom podcast you can see what i've got going on what uh what me and joe got on in the background and stuff you know i've got the bob dylan times they are a changing vinyl uh, and the the book by huey p newton one of the uh founding members of the black panther party book called revolutionary suicide um felt felt relevant once again Mm -hmm. so gotta gotta have that um that you know you could you could have seen that instead of me telling you you know like uh, you don't know what this cover looks like it's a dope ass cover you can check it out uh youtube penny bloom podcast but uh 
Yeah. And then beyond that, do me one favor. If you like the show, show one person. Tell one person, hey, I think you dig this. It was a fun episode. I know you liked this movie. Check it out. That's all. Just do that. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, let's rate this thing. On a scale of 1 to 10, enjoyment-wise, is it anything other than a 10? No. Uh, if I could go higher, I would because there's other 10s that I don't feel the same. Well, no. A 10 is just a 10. You know when it's a 10, mm-hmm. and this one, I knew. Um, there's no 10s that sneak in there. No. you know. Yeah, you know while you're watching the movie that it's kind of a 10. And then when I got done, yeah. No, I enjoyment-wise, there's no part of me that has any qualm with giving a 10 at all um i mean it's going to do very well critically as well it's extremely tightly written extremely well performed incredibly entertaining beautiful score and soundtrack uh insanely inventive visual language incredibly original i'd never see i've never seen anything like it particularly um we're in the nine high i'm going floor i'm going floor nine like yeah i think Nine two five. Not, let's see. What is the highest we've ever given an action? Is John Wick four a nine two five? John Wick four is an eight seven five. Oh yeah. Okay, that makes me feel even better. Um, and I think that might be the highest be- we've given. Yeah, that is. Um, the next highest would be Hard Boiled at an eight two five. Um, mm. Yeah. No. I mean, like the thing is, is that at you know with John Wick four at an eight seven five, that's a good example of. Like, my critique for that would be that it is bloated. That you could trim the fat in that movie. Mm. I have no idea where you trim the fat in this movie. So, like, it's it's at least a 925. Like, it is it is better than John Wick 4 comfortably, you know? Um, an 825 to an... So, like, Hard Boiled at an 825, and then John Wick at an 875. Like, that half point better. It's just, that does make sense to me is you know an, a half point better is rrr the same ga- you know is it the same jump up um from hard boy to john wick and then to john wick to rrr do you think it's i would say so i would say so at, uh, again at least yeah. i don't think it's i don't think it's a smaller jump I'm, uh, i think so, i'm at like a nine two five or nine five and yeah, i don't know why my... i can't go up to like at the seven five but it that no just... i mean like nine seven five is a near perfect movie and i feel like you know, as much as I do like the visual language of this film, it's not to say I don't think it couldn't have been better. Like, it's... Mm-hmm. There, there, there are very few movies that are fucking perfect. This is this is about as good as you could possibly get. Um, I think, But yeah. there are, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, I think a 9... I, I, my gut took me 9.25, but I wouldn't mind a 9.5. A 9.25 gives us a 9.5 flat, or a 95%. A nine five gives us a ninety six 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 six, so a ninety seven percent basically. I think gotcha. the nine two five sounds a little. It sounded more. It sounded better. Like a me. nine five flat. Better. Yeah, and maybe if they could make this in a two hour thirty minute, and it was a little more concise, but all the same stuff still happened there. Maybe it becomes a perfect. Or maybe if if the yeah, I mean, like I literally, know. the only like, thing that could have made it better is if it was tighter. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's. I mean, like, and that's that's not a problem, you know. I don't mind. I don't mind a three hour movie. I'll gladly watch a three hour movie. But uh, it's if you can pull something this good off in less time, that's impressive, you know. And I think that that would that would make the movie even better. Which means it's not it's not perfect, you know. It's not a it's yeah, not that. But so a like, nine five, uh, a ninety five. That's I. It doesn't feel high. Like that feels yeah. Like just five percent. What could they have changed? I don't really know. Because music, Small, there's music, yeah. there's acting, there's action, there's love, there's betrayal. I mean, there's just everything you want in a movie. Um, mm. but, this is what movies are. We come to this place yes. for magic. Yes, Nicole um, Kidman would love this one. This one is yeah. is what the movies are made for. Um, it's true. But, it's true. I would love to see this on a big screen. That'd be insane. But uh, yeah, yeah, with that. Let's get in mm-hmm. to our album of the week. Would you like to kick it off with your choice for this week? Sure. Uh, kind of, uh, kind of. it doesn't relate to this movie really at all. Um, I guess maybe a little bit. Uh, it's just all over the place. You got a lot of everything uh, in this album. Um, I'm, I'm listening to Prince now. 
um, and the album I chose from him was Controversy. Um, and only eight tracks, um, but man, does does he just touch a, a wide variety of, of topics. Um, sexuality is a pretty big one. Uh, why mm-hmm. people are all up in each other's business, like we should all just love each other is kind of uh, the message I'm, I'm getting. But then there's also like a talk to Russia and hey, don't blow up the earth, man. I'm kind of <laughs> uh, so there's there's that in there which is good. Kind of on here, yeah. You know, and and then it, the the album ends with uh, "Jack You Off," uh, which is talking about just going to a movie and hey, I'll I'll, I'll jack you off in the in the back or uh, let's let's go out here. It's just so we got every you know you kind of Prince uh, just just all encompassing here. Um, I don't know, and it, and it just sounds good. I love Prince, his guitar just. Ooh. He's an expert. I don't yeah. know how people... Prince like, is awesome. He's... I don't know. Every guitar solo I've seen from him, I'm not very um, like knowledgeable on just who the best guitar players in the world are like of all time. But man, every time I've seen him just do a solo or just put on something like for a show and there's this legendary story surrounding Prince um, and the guitar and just in him. And uh, I don't know, very... This is kind of the first album that I've I've sat down and, and listened to in total for him, and uh, I'm definitely going to be listening to more. That's for sure. Good, um, good. So yeah, I love that pick. I love me some Prince. That's a that's a brilliant choice there. Um, I'm returning to the jazz ish vein. You know, um, been a been a couple weeks, but since I did a uh, you know No Words album, mm-hmm. I think the last one was the Challengers original soundtrack, um, and. Uh, my my album of the week is Tickle the Ivory by Minoru Mukaya. It's uh I've I found out after I listened to this album multiple times and fucking loved it that he is actually the he was the keyboardist for Cassiopeia. The album of the week I had mm-hmm. A month ago, so I was like, "Oh shit, okay." This is well, that makes Truman sense. That's why I like it. Yeah. This is the the way you connect art and and music and everything is like your own Truman. I don't know how it, yeah. but it's working. It's all coming together. Yeah, it all um, it all works for me, man. <laughs> uh, because I love Minoru Makaya. It's uh, uh, this album is it's got brilliant piano on it, brilliant keyboarding. Um, I was listening while I was at work today, and it was raining, and it was one of those ones that. I was walking back from a delivery back to my car and thunder was roaring and there was the soft pattering of the rain. And I had this in one ear and it just felt right. Mm. It like made me go like, yeah, you know what? This is, Ah. this is beautiful. Mm. Like even, even on an, like one of those albums that makes a rainy day good. Um, Mm. and I, I appreciate that sort of thing. And it's, it's got this serene video gamey soundtrack sort of vibe to it. And I mean, I could write to it. I could read to it. Um, I in fact I did yesterday uh the poem the poem I wrote mm. yesterday I was listening to Tickle the Ivory by Minoru Mikaya it's uh hmm. it's it's really good so okay. um strongly recommend everybody check that out but uh yeah Controversy by Prince and uh, Tickle the Ivory by Minoru Mikaya um and a 95% for RRR man that's going to be tough to beat but mm-hmm. if there's a movie that might be able to might i'm not going to guarantee it it will be next monday's with mad max fury road i'm super excited to cover that um i watched it for the first time earlier this year just a couple months ago um and i cannot wait to cover mm-hmm. it that's why we're doing multiple anticipatory podcasts for furiosa uh, I'm super excited for it. So we've got Fury Road on Monday, Furiosa on Wednesday, and next Friday we will be concluding the month of May with the top 10 action films. Uh, me and Joe are both going to give our top 10 favorite action films of all time, and uh, that'll be that'll be the last week, in theory, that we'll be going three, uh, three a week for a while. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to reduce it to two a week uh, starting in June. So... Uh, we're only oversaturating you with content for a little bit longer. <laughs> um, yes. But, uh, yeah, with that, I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. Remember, peace, love, and bloom. And your friendship is more valuable than this life, brother. I will die with pride.